Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Facebook Live on the MySonet Software Facebook channel. My name is Kathy Frum. Come on in, have a seat. And today I'm going to share some uh, information about fonts and lettering in our MySonet software. So come on in, uh, grab a chair. And if you're watching this recorded, um, thank you for joining us after the fact. I understand it's hard to sometimes catch these um, events when they are live. So today's topic is all about lettering and fonts. And I'd like to know from you, first off, um, you know, share with us um, where you're joining us from. And uh, do you have a favorite font? Do you like script fonts or block fonts? Or do you have a particular uh, font in our software that you use that's your go-to font for your projects? Um, share that information with us. I also want to share with you that in the background, we have Amy and Ryan uh, working to keep everyone safe on our Facebook Live. You will not be asked um, for any money or any personal information, anything like that um, in the comments. So just um, feel free to use those comments to communicate with them and with myself. They'll pass on your questions to me. And if there's a question we can't answer during the live time, um, we do monitor our Facebook live um, chats for a week or more after we go live and um, we'll get back to you with questions, um, with answers for your questions. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my view for you so you can see some software. All right. So once again, this is my Sonat Facebook Live and our topic is all about letters and fonts. And today I want to take you just a little bit beyond the basics of fonts. First off, let me tell you that what I'm going to show you today can be done in all levels of our software, um, all paid for levels of our software, our silver, our gold, and our platinum. And it doesn't matter if it is the perpetual version, that's that hard copy um, box software that you can buy directly from your dealer or retailer, or if you purchase the subscription version, um, you will have more than 200 fonts. It's 245 fonts actually in all three levels of software. Lots to choose from. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my screen open to the uh, letter ribbon and let me mouse over here for you. So the letter ribbon is right here at the top. And this is everything along this horizontal line that has to do with lettering. And by the way, yes, I am using the Windows version, but all of these features and functions are available in our Mac software. So buttons and, and symbols are just in different places on the Mac, but you have the same uh, use of, of the fonts and lettering. So in our letters box is where we would type uh, what we want to, um, to show. But first, let's take a, a brief look at some of the different fonts we have. There's a lot. 245 is a lot of fonts. I want to let you know that fonts are put into different categories. And you can see the category name up here in the upper, uh, for you, it should be your upper left corner. This first category is called applique. And then the next category is children's. So each the categories are alphabetized and then within each category the names of the fonts are alphabetized as well so some of the fonts have different letters after them let's let's just choose uh, this font athletic outline patch i'm going to isolate it here so you can see it and this font name says that it's uh, athletic outline patch UC, and then 35 to 70 millimeters. And then after that, it has an ML. So those are all different codes for what that font can do. So this happens to be um, uppercase only, and that's what UC stands for. If you didn't realize that, um, you only have like an ABC in caps. Let's find a font that shows... Here, let's look at this impact font here. This shows both um, uppercase as well as lowercase letters. So that's what the UC means and, 
and that can be a, a good hint for you as well. So we have a lot of different types and styles of fonts. And as you can see, as we scroll through here, we have them organized in different categories. And like I said, the categories themselves are, are alphabetized. All righty. So um, let's see. Now, if you have the name of a font that you want to use, but you can't remember the name of that, or I'm sorry, let me start my sentence again. Let's say you know the name of the font you want to use, but you don't know which category it's in. Like, is it in modern? You know that it's not a script font, so it's not going to be there. It might be in traditional, but it could be someplace else. You have something called font manager. And with the font manager, when you open that, you will see a listing of fonts. Now it's it's on the applique section because that's where I was last. You can even see my font impact patch is highlighted. But below that, you have the ability to search. So I'm going to search for um, Arial and see what comes up. Whoops, it helped if I spelled Arial correctly. Ah. Oh, let's try. There we go. So here in tradition, I have Arial size. Um, zero, or, I'm sorry, eight to 14 and 14 to 20. I also have an Arial as a nearest point font. There are a few fonts that are called nearest point, and that has to do with where the jump stitch connects from letter to letter, meaning that it's going to jump from one letter to the next in the minimal amount of distance. That's what nearest point uh, refers to. I want to pick the small Arial, so I'm just going to select it from my list and then go ahead and close. There we go. And now that Arial font is in my selection box on the left. A little bit about size, because that's a lot. I'm going to talk about size and, and different types of stitches you can do today. Each font gives a recommended size range that works best for that font. So this is a smaller font, eight to 14 millimeters. That's recommended, but we can kind of um, fudge it a little bit if you know some tips and tricks, which I will share with you today on that. But fonts are digitized differently for different sizes. You notice that the Arial font had two font sizes. So if I open that back up, here's the bigger font, Arial 14 through 20 size. So if I know I want a, a slightly larger size, I'm going to start off with that larger version of that font. Things that um, happen behind the scenes as far as the digitizing of the fonts, there'll be a different amount of um, underlay or maybe some edge walking stitches that might be part of the font um, that in a larger font that might not be available in a smaller font. So um, that's a, the reasoning behind using the size closest to what you want to do. All right, we are going to change our word and let's just say, let's just use the word font for our test here. And I'm going to click on apply and Let's, my goodness, that is really tiny on there. Well, I do have a larger hoop selected. So there, I zoomed that up for you so you can see it really well. Now, a couple of things that, you know what? I'm going to redo that because I realized I had a tool turned on um, from earlier. And I don't want to show you that tool yet. I'm not quite ready to share that one with you. So let's... Let's do another Zoom. I did a fresh copy. And I'm going to go over here to my film strip, select my Once Upon a Times, and just delete those. Get those out of our way for you. All right. So here's our word font in size eight. And over on the right hand side, you can see the actual 
height and width of the word. Okay, so this word is 22.9 millimeters and it's 8.1 millimeters. If you hover, it will give you it, the measurement in inches, 0.319 inches. So that's uh, fairly small there. And you can tell that it's um, fairly dense. We are looking at the font in, in uh, 3D, so as it would stitch out, okay? Now, let's say that I've had some problems using small fonts. They get kind of bunched up or they don't read real clearly after you've stitched them. And it seems like there's too much thread in the space for the satin stitch. Well, did you know you can adjust that? It's really easy to do. And I'm gonna show you how. Uh, first off, I'm going to just switch to a smaller hoop so I don't have to keep zooming around for you guys real quick. Just drop down to a more reasonable sized hoop for this little sample here. And I'm gonna put in another copy of the same word. I wanna keep one copy constant as the software worked with it and then show you what you can do for density, all right? And again, you can do this on any level. So here I'm zoomed up quite a bit. Um, that looks like it's a pretty good um, size for you. And just, um, by the way, if you join just a few minutes late, that's fine, we, we are recording today's session. And a welcome to both our Facebook Live viewers and our YouTube viewers. So we are live on both, um, both platforms today. My name's Kathy Frum. Uh, we're discussing fonts and lettering in the MySonet software today. And right now we're talking about density. So here on my second font, I have the design selected. You can tell it's selected because it has the boxes around it. They are green. Green boxes mean that I can change what's going on. It's not locked down yet. So I'm going to right click on my box and I'm going to come over here to satin column. A new box pops up for me, and here I can alter the density. Now, density is how close each of those satin stitches are to one another. The lower the number for density, so the lowest number is two, the more stitches will be put into that space. Okay, the size is not going to change, but the number of threads will change. If I increase my number, and I can increase it all the way to 15, that will space out my threads. They won't be so tight up against one another. Every font has a default density. They're not all the same, and a lot of that has to depend on how small the font is to begin with. The smaller fonts tend to have a little higher density, maybe set at four, five, or six. And the bigger fonts you might see um, more at the two, three um, as the default setting. So you can change any of them. So just to illustrate and show you kind of a big change, I'm going to go up to eight and then click on OK. And so that's an extreme change. I'll slide that so you can see both of them. That that's a real extreme change in how many stitches I have. My new font at density of eight has 298 stitches. I'm seeing that over here on the right-hand side. My original font with the density of five has 400 stitches. So I have removed quite a few stitches on, on my um, second font. I've lost 102 stitches on there. Um, that's going to make it more open. Now, how do you know what the right number is for you? Some of that is based on experience, but it's a really good thing to do some testing um, when you are going to be doing a lot of work with small fonts. And you don't have to do um, extensive testing, meaning you don't have to like type out your entire uh, phrase or word, but I will typically do just a, a short, um, a short word, and I'm going to do another one for you here so you can see the difference. And I'm going to change this one. I'm going to take it all the way up to the maximum of 15 for you. And you can see just how sparse that is. Okay. 
So let me grab a sample here for you. And let me come back so you can see me, my mouse in the right spot, because I'm going to show you a sample here. Oh, uh, let's see here. Come on. There we go. There we go. Got my camera going there. What I have here, and I realize that it's on pink, so it doesn't show up the best, but it's a sample I did in the past. I was just running um, the title font, and I ran this font at density four, five, six, seven, eight, and then um, I just did a couple other tests down here on my scrap here. So this way, if I just do, and you really don't need that many words, you just use the name of the font. I like to use the name of the font because then I know what font I used. Um, and then take a look at the stitch out and say, hey, I really think for my project that a density of six is going to be good for my project based on my fabric weight and type. And I would stitch the font on the actual fabric with the stabilizer you plan to use uh, because that's the true test. A knit fabric will react differently than a woven. And if it's a very lightweight fabric, think about if you're doing um, maybe a christening gown and you want to embroider um, the name and the date for a, a memory, that fabric is typically very thin or it might be a satin or a lawn type fabric. So you don't want a lot of heavy stitches bogging it down. So do test on the fabric that you're using. Um, I'll tell you a little secret. I keep a couple old polo shirts around um, for when I want to do polo shirts and I just like cut the back out of them and I just use that for embroidering to test on knits um, when I'm asked to do something on like a polo shirt. So that works really good um, for ready to wear. All right. Now stabilizers. That's another factor um, that comes to play when you're doing uh, small lettering, especially it's a little more picky. So small lettering tends to sink in. So you want a decent stabilizer and tearaway is not always your best friend when it comes to stabilizer. Sometimes you would do much better to have a cutaway. So in this sample here, I'm gonna show you, this is a um, cutaway mesh style. I don't particularly need bulk or heaviness, but I want stability. And so this um, cutaway mesh is very stable in both directions, um, which makes it uh, very, very good for doing lettering. Sometimes I will even layer the mesh along with some tearaway. So I still left some tearaway in here to show you. Um, so I will hoop my mesh and my fabric and I might slip my tearaway underneath it, or I could hoop my tearaway um, as well. And this gives a lot more stability, especially in between the letters. So it supports them. They don't get like crunched when you suddenly don't have any stabilizer between the letters. Now this sample is um, something a little bit different that I did. I was playing with not only densities, you can see I was comparing densities three and four here, but I was also comparing um, turning my jump threads and my trim commands off. So many embroidery machines have the option to turn those commands off. And with smaller uh, lettering, sometimes turning off those commands will make your embroidery a little flatter. So this first sample, this is the back side, you can see that that's got a little bit more thickness. It is a thicker, um, thread. It's a 40 weight thread. All right. And I turned, I did have all my commands on. If I come down to this one here, this middle one, it's still the blue thread. I'm actually using a different thread. I'm using a 60 weight embroidery thread. Now they're a little hard to find. So check with your retailer if they're not carrying 60 weight thread and you're a fan of doing a lot of lettering you might want to ask them to carry some 60 weight uh, poly embroidery thread. 
it's the same weight as your bobbin thread is. Uh, most bobbin thread is 60 weight. There is some that is a little bit thinner, but you can get away with a denser uh, uh, letter if you reduce your thread size. So see, there's two things at play here and you're going to want to test which one is the right one for your project. So sometimes it's changing the thread. Now, I will tell you that where I found the 60 weight thread, there are not nearly as many colors. There's maybe like 50 or 60 colors of it available, um, but there's enough to get through your lettering. And you can usually find something that would coordinate with a 40 weight thread as well. So those two things. Um, turning off your jump threads and your trim commands off, that's going to reduce a little bit of bulk on the back side, making it a little more um, flexible, shall we say, and then changing your density and your thread choice. So those are some tips for working with small fonts, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, um, please feel free to put those in the chat. And I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here. Let me bring my mouse back to, to my screen. I'm going to just come over here and select everything from my film strip. I love the film strip. It makes it so easy to maneuver things around. And this time we want to talk opposite, okay? We're going to talk about using a font in a little bit of a bigger style. So I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to go to a a script satiny kind of font. Let's see, what do I like today? Yes, it's like being told you have, you know, six choices of dinner and, you know, you can't decide which one you really like. Um, let's choose, oh, I know. You're like, Kathy, just make up your mind, will you? Um, I'm gonna choose, review. All right. And I'm going to just put um, a single initial, maybe if my keyboard works. And um, something to know is when you have the size range of 15 to 35 in your ribbon, if you come across just past your letters, there's a size already populated there. The software defaults to the smallest size for you. So let's just go with that. I'm going to click on OK so you can see that. Now, um, oh, we do have a thread question. Um, what about serge or thread? What is that weight and can you embroider with it? Well, you know, most serge or thread doesn't actually have a size, a denier weight on it. However, I do know that serge or thread, um, unlike traditional sewing thread, is only got two plies or two twists of thread together. Sewing thread is made with three ply traditionally. So it is a bit thinner than a sewing thread. Most sewing threads are a weight of 50. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of in between. You could test it, but just know that most serger thread is not as um, fine of a thread, meaning there's tends to be a little more fuzz with it. And it's a very flat look. Now that doesn't mean that's a bad look. It's just different than we're accustomed to with our machine embroidery threads. Machine embroidery threads are typically shiny and very smooth looking. So I know I've never tried it. That'll have to be something I try in the future is just to see what happens. So thanks for raising that question. Okay. So we are looking at our Letter K here, just a simple satin stitch, no frills or anything on this um, particular letter. And I told you before that the box around it has green handles. And if you bring in just any embroidery design, if you just insert an embroidery design, they're going to come in with white handles, unless it's from within the software. Green handles mean that the design is open and stitches can be added or taken away as you change the size. It is a different principle than resizing, but it's along the same path. What happens is that in when you're using your green handles, the 
font or the letter or the super design, if you were working with a super design with green handles, would totally redigitize um, based on the size you chose. Now, to change the size, you've got options. And I love this. If you're a visual person, you're probably just going to want to grab one of any of the four corner handles, doesn't matter which one you do, and drag it out. You can drag it up, you can drag it out. Okay, you can make it whatever size you want. If you don't like what happened, we have an undo button at the top and you can restore your design to the right size. If you want to keep the proportions identical, then hold down your shift and your when you bring it in or out, it will keep the proportions. So my original K was at 249 stitches. And when I let go and it has, um, I've recalculated the stitches to be 411 stitches. And now my height is 23.4. That's still not a terribly big letter. I want to go bigger. So let me just give myself more screen space and look at what's happening here. I'm getting a very, very large, um, almost four inches, just over four inch height in letter. Now this is a satin stitch letter, guys. So can you imagine how long those satin stitches are going to be? That's going to be huge um, jumping from side to side. And you can guesstimate your size if you have your grid turned on, which is an option you can have it on or off. Each grid in the default is five is 10 millimeters rather. Um, so this is 10, 20 plus some. But we have a really accurate way to tell exactly how wide those satin stitches are, or you can measure anything on an embroidery design. Just simply go to the view tab and under the view tab, this is also where you show grid or turn it off. We have a little ruler that's called get length and I want to measure side to side. So I'm, my ruler's attached to my mouse pointer. I'm going to left click and just while holding my left click down, I'm going to drag that ruler all the way across and it may be too small for you to read, but it's telling me it's 29.4 millimeters or 1.18 inches. So that's a huge long jump stitch. I want you to think about just a sewing zigzag stitch on your machine. And most sewing machines today make a, a zigzag or a satin stitch in a seven to nine millimeter width. There are some that have side motion that can go wider than that, but that's fairly standard, okay? If you get too wide or too long of a stitch, you're gonna have very loose stitches and you're not going to have a very pretty embroidery. It's certainly not going to launder or hold up very well. So, but you're like, I really need to use this particular font. Whoops, sorry about that guys, keep clicking. Let me come back to my letter tab for you. Um, you wanna use this font. So you know what, there's a way around that. With it selected, I'm going to right click and I am going to come in here to satin column and then I can go in the upper section here where it says options. I have different patterns I can choose from. The little drop down is going to give me different options for fill patterns. Whoops, I inadvertently closed that. And as you can as you scroll down, you see that they are categorized, categorized as well. And perhaps you want to still retain that look of satin, but you, you don't want to totally flat fill. So if you go to the gradient and lace section, the bottom row in there is all like multiple satin columns. So I'm going to choose uh, this one. By the way, there's over 200 different fill patterns to choose from. And now I see a picture, a preview of that in my little window here. I'm going to leave my density alone at four. And let me just move this over and click on OK. And you can see that my letter has now been divided into um, four columns of thread. And to double check how wide those middle columns are, I'm just going to grab my get length tool again. 
and I'm down to 10 millimeters for those. So if I thought that was still a little bit large, I can right click on, come back to satin column. Remember, you're always going back to the name that the it was originally. It originally was a satin column. And I'm going to choose a little bit smaller, the next one down, and see how I like that. So though that's a little bit better, I think, as far as our length goes. Whoops. Cancel. I have a runaway mouse today. All right. And so now I'm at like seven, seven point, depending on 7.7, 7 7.5 7 millimeters. So that's a, a more average satin stitch. So you can see that I can retain the look of a satin stitch. Let me pop this into um, the design player for you and show you it kind of in in real view there. Might be a little bit cleaner of a look for you, or I can even pop it into Life View for you. I don't know if you use this tool. Life View lets you see it um, at different angles and different rotations. You can manipulate it around, see how the light reflects on it. You can zoom it in and out, you know, move it around on screen. Um, a lot of things you can check out there. So um, there's nothing, Truly, though, like doing a test stitch, especially if you're going to do a very special project on something like this. Okay. Alrighty. So that's one way to retain the satin. Um, let me just check my time. We're doing well. There's another way um, to do that. And I'm going to just keep working with this same letter and go to our pattern fill again. But I'm going to choose something fun. I'm going to choose, oh, let's see. I have smiley faces and I have little diamonds and cables and things like that. I wanna choose something that'll show up well for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's try, let's try these leaves. Let's see how they look. And I'm gonna do a zoom on this upper part of my cape. There you go. You should be able to see that pretty good. Now, instead of having a satin look, I have more of a flat look. And I'm zoomed oh, 600 some percent. Let me take you back down to normal there and take you into life view. You can kind of see the image of the pattern. So you can see it better in Design Player, I think. And you can see that you can have um, a decorative type of fill. It doesn't have to be basic. We do have lots of basic fills. If you just want something nice and flat, maybe you're making something like an athletic le letter, that might be more appropriate. But if you want to be fun, you can do something fun like a fun fill pattern. And with over 200 to choose from, there are many to, um, to select from. So I'm going to show you a large letter. Let me come back to you. Um, uh, let's see here. There I am. Just takes a minute for the camera to switch over. So here's a very large uh, letter C with a fill pattern. Um, if you can't guess, you know, this. I did this a while ago before my local baseball team was still called the Cleveland Indians. Um, and I have baseball bats in my fill pattern. So that's a lot of fun. You should also take into consideration the density of your fill pattern. You may need to increase it depending on what this looks like. So that's something else to double check. You can adjust density as well. I've always found with a large letter, and this letter is like six inches tall, six, maybe almost seven, that I need to um, go to a lower density number. I need more thread in that sample. Alrighty, so let me show you another thing that we can do with our uh, lettering. Again, I'm just going to keep using our K here. Oops, let me make sure you can see. You can see the fun stuff. You don't need to look at me. There we go. There's my screen back for you. All right, once again, I'm going to use that wonderful right click on my letter and come into, again, the satin column. It, it can be a little um, 
tricky. You just have to remember where you started. It was it was a satin comb to begin with. And I want to choose a more basic fill pattern to show on this one. So let's see. Let's just come up here to this gradient um, place. Now, you may also add your own underlay to lettering. And if you're going to go large and your design did not originally have underlay, see nothing is checked here, neither zigzag or edge walk. I could add it. I would caution against adding it to a decorative fill pattern like the baseball bats. Um, it may show through if your thread color is very light and if your fill density is lighter. Um, I've had that happen. So either don't use light colored thread or drop that density down if you're going to use the, um, especially the zigzag underlay, okay? You can also add edge walk. An edge walk, it does a little stitch around the perimeter of the letter, making it more stable. It's sort of like an extra layer of interfacing. Um, that's what underlay does for your fonts. But what I want to show you today, let me first take this to just this basic font. So you can see, or basic fill pattern, see nice and Nice and basic, nothing special, but we're going to turn it into something special. Again, go back into our satin column properties. And next to the density, I have a gradient check mark. So I'm going to check the check mark, put a check mark in that box for gradient. And you can see that I have a bar across here. When you choose gradient, the multicolor gradient pops in and it has added a secondary color to my design. All right. You can make gradient as simple as this, clicking OK. And there I have two colors of gradient. You can see it used a red, a yellow, and a little bit of a brown. And it just repeats and gives you that shading. All right. Now, let's play a little bit more with that gradient. Let's add another, it's called add another marker. And then I can change that thread color. So whichever box here has the blue around it, that is the thread color here that I can change. So I really don't want that dark of a brown. I'm just going to open up my color selection window. And I really want to stick with something um, more in the orangey field. So I'm going to go to... Oh, let's try this one. This is Golden Poppy, one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to take my first yellow and I'm going to change it. Oops, my mouse ran away. There we go. I'm going to change it to a lighter shade of yellow. So let me get into my yellows and change it to a very pale yellow. Okay, so now I kind of have a light a medium and a dark grading out from yellows to oranges and click OK. So you can see I get a different look to that as well. All right. Coming back in, let me show you what else you can do here. Um, we can change our density even within this gradient. So I might want to go a little bit closer. So I'm going to go all the way down to two on this one. There we go. And now I have a little bit more of a pattern. Okay. What that looks like in Design Player. You can see it here. Now, if you don't like the spacing of your stripes, because in this particular letter, it's, it's quite striped. Um, go back to Satin Column. And I can move these markers. If I want more darker, if I want like to reduce the amount of thread in light, I can shift these left or right. And just by shifting them, it changes how much of the value. So you see up here in the upper areas of the letter, I have more of the light yellow and then grading out to the darker um, yellows and oranges. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And I have a sample. It kind of reminds me of candy corn. That was not intentional, by the way, to make a letter that looked like candy corn. But um, 
it, it kind of did. So let's try this once more. Get my camera back to where I want to be. Alrighty, I guess we're just not going to, uh, we're not going to be able to show. There we go. There we go. All right, so here is my letter C again, and I have a lot of light on in the background here. If I hold it flat, you kind of see a reflection. But this one I did in red, white, and blue. Um, you can see that I just did, a, I did not do my baseball um, bat um, fill pattern. I used a different fill pattern, but you can see how that shades out. Okay, that's the same size. And then I stitched a little bit of a sampler to better understand. Okay, so we have a single color and then we have a multicolor gradient. So that's two. And then um, adding a, another marker gives me three colors. So, you know, sometimes just stitching, you don't have to do a whole word. Do a couple letters and see how you like the effect. All right. I can see that being a really nice effect. One thing to note, what will happen here in our software is you will have a lot of different color changes. And it's the same colors. It's the same shades over and over again. This one has 12 changes. You really can't color sort this because it has to build in layers. So it lays down like a foundation. In fact, do I have enough time? I think I have enough time to show you how this works. I'm going to um, pop this into our um, stitch editor program or a mod. I'll use modify because modify is available for um, our gold level. I fixed the stitches because I can't take it to modify unless I do so. Um, and here, let me hide. So I'm, I'm seeing my stitches. I'm just hiding all these other numbers. I got one left, one hiding below. There we go. So here's that first stitch. Here's that second one added on. Um, and you can see that it builds in sections. So there's like the first section of the four shades, how that works. And then it's going to move on and do a repeat again of how that works to, to build the shading. When it turns blue, it's because I'm hovering over the color in the color bar. There's really no blue thread in there. So um, that's how the shading uh, builds in gradient. If you never stitch something with a gradient fill, that's why. And that's why you can't color sort it either. Okay. All right, I'm just going to close out of our um, modify and bring you back over here. And I brought you back to a different window. I pre-made this um, gradient fill for you earlier before we started, um, just to show you some differences. And this is still open. So if I come in here and play with our pattern fill, because this particular font style did not start as a satin stitch, this particular font style started as a fill, I get another choice. I get the choice of angles along with doing my pattern and my gradient down here. Let me move this over a bit. If you look at the lower um, ABC here, you can see that the gradient is running on an angle going um, from left to upper right, lower left to upper right. The top one is just going very vertically. So if, you're, if your lettering started out as a fill, you can also have um, angle choices for both your fill pattern and for your gradient. So that's a nice bonus on that. So you just cancel out of that. Alrighty, so a couple other things. We've got some time left. I wanted to share with you are um, some of our specialty fonts. I'm just going to clear this and come over to the children's category. So the children's category it has a lot of fun fonts in it that you can use, um, but it also has some that are very unique. So our cheese and mouse um, font, cheese and mice font, excuse me, 
um, that is an uppercase and it's a two color font. So if I just do one, two, three, A, B, C, notice I typed lowercase A, B, C, but it did uppercase. That's a nice little thing. You don't have to worry about that. If it's an uppercase font and you type a lowercase font, it will, it'll still create it as uppercase. So my numbers are little mice. Isn't that cute? Right. And I want to show you a place um, for resources. And um, this will also show you some more examples of these fun fonts. So let me um, share with you that you can go right to the MySonet um, webpage by clicking on your the little cloud with the green check mark and go to manage my account. And I'm going to need to bring this over. So you can see it on my screen. There you go. Show that there. And if I go to my dashboard and go to download and updates, this is where initially you would download your software if you need to or do an update for it. But if you scroll down towards the bottom, we have our quick start guide, our help and guides, and our inspiration and education. In our help guides, these are all of the help guides that are available for you to either view online or download. And the font lettering information is included in the embroidery download. So I can view it online if I don't want to download it. And here's what that looks like. Or I can um, just bring it on Screen for you. I can download and, and open it. So let me let me see here. All right, I got my. Oh, I know what I want to do. Um, I'm going to bring it up as a PDF and show you. Um, the The guides are quite intensive as far as pages go, so I'd recommend that you download and then um, show look at it as a PDF file. Okay. Um, that PDF is a little more manageable. And if you want to print out certain pages, um, like lettering starts at like mm, page, like 300 and some, I want to say it was like three, 358, 359 in the windows and somewhere close to that in the Mac version of the help guides. What I'm showing you here, oops, I pulled up the wrong one for you. <laughs> Here's our help guide. Creating lettering, that's this chapter 19 here, page three. I was off a little, page 365 here. Um, this is showing you all of your different, how to do all the fun things I've been showing you. Okay. And let me pop to this one. So on the web page, we also have, there's our over Mac. And then here are sample guides. So we have a font sample guide, and that's what I have pulled up ready to show you next. And that font sample guide, this might be worth printing a page or two. Uh, shows you every category. On the left-hand column, you have an index. And I pulled up that children's category for you to show, and it shows nice samples of animal magic, the birdies. Uh, let me do, let me zoom for you get a better view of this. Um, there's our dog font. What's really cool is that in the dog font, the letter, the numbers are shaped like dog bones at the end. And there's also a dog outline font. And there is a cat font. There's our kitty cats. Let me scroll over for you. So it's a little hard to screen with my mouse, but the, the cat fonts, the numbers have little cat tails. Look, they're little, they have a little cat face and then a little cat tail. So they're pretty, they're pretty cool on that. All right. And I have a couple stitch outs to share with you for cats and dogs. Let me come back over. Thank you. And so here's my Okay, my mother-in-law is affectionately known as the crazy cat lady. Um, she only really has a couple cats, but, you know. Um, so I did this 
So this is the outline version in a double stitch or a triple stitch. So this one's a little thicker. But aren't they adorable, those little cat faces? And then in the dog font, uh, these are my puppies, Judy and Guido. And then the little asterisks are in one of the symbols and they're little dog bones. And the little um, and sign is a dog bone. So um, those are a lot of fun to play with. In, um, in the dog bone, let's see, let's, I, mean, I gotta show you this really quick because sometimes, you know, you're looking for something in particular and you can't find it. You discover it by accident. This was a total accident I discovered. So I was playing with the dog font and I'll make that bigger. And I, for whatever reason, I did the percent sign and we're not, and the percent sign for the little dots are tennis balls. So if I needed a little tennis ball, I could easily crop this out in my stitch editor program and have little tennis balls. I can make them any size I want just by changing the font size. So I'm always happy when I can find another use for my, um, for my fonts or something in my fonts. Alrighty. Um, looking to see, I don't really see any other questions yet. So, and I have just a few more minutes. I want to share with you a couple of special effects fonts. So I'm going to go to the category called effects, E-F-F-E-C-T-S. And we have fonts. Ooh, Scroll too far. We have fonts that are felting fonts. Let's clear off my screen here. So felting fonts, just like we, we've done felting embroidery. I know some of our educators on our other channels have done um, felting uh, episodes. So you can do felted letters. And felting is when you use a base fabric and then some fiber on the wrong side. You hoop upside down. And then with special felting needles, it pushes those fibers to the right side. So it's a real soft look. It's, it's a lot of fun to play with. We also have twin needle effects. So let's just do um, a word here in twin needle. We'll do the word fall. And I want to show you on the right hand side, there's a little symbol here next to the color that indicates it's a twin needle. If I hover, it even tells me that this used a three millimeter twin needle. And my right hand thread is um, a particular number and my left hand thread is a particular number. So it's gonna give me both color numbers as well as the size of the twin needle. Let's say I wanna change that. So if I double click, it opens my color selection window. You know how this works. Here's your two colors it's showing. And your first color will be here in the main color section, my second color will be under the twin needle section here. So I could change that. Um, let's just change it to a contrast. Um, let's be crazy and do yellow um, with that so you can see it on screen. I can also change the size twin needle I'm going to use. It started off with 3.0, but maybe I don't have a 3.0 twin needle. I have a 2.5 twin needle in my stash. So I'm going to select the 2.5 twin needle and then click on OK. And that will adjust my uh, lettering uh, to accommodate the proper twin needle. Something I want to caution you about, remember a twin needle has one uh, shaft and two needles attached to it. And some embroidery machine feet that are the embroidery foot have just a round hole or maybe an oval hole. You need to check to make sure that your twin needle is going to clear your embroidery foot or else you're going to have um, a broken needle. And we don't want that. So um, for some of our brands, we can swap out from a traditional sensor foot embroidery foot that has more of the round hole to a floating foot for embroidery. And that has a more uh, oval um, hole and you can do twin needle um, embroidery, whether it's lettering or, or something else, a design um, with that type of foot. So you need to check that out first. 
don't go to all the work of doing this until you make sure you have the foot that will accommodate your twin needle. Don't want any broken needles. And also in that category, we have a, um, there are four twin needle options, but we also have the option of um, wing needle work. And wing needles, again, that's a specialty needle. It's a needle that has a little bit of a wider um, edge on either side of it, kind of curves out like wings would, that intentionally puts holes in your fabric. I'm going to zoom up here so you can see that pattern. It's basically like a repetitive cross stitch over itself back and forth. And that repetitive stitch helps to spread the fibers apart. So you're intentionally making holes in it. You must think about what kind of fabric you're going to use on uh, for this font. Um, wing needles work best with natural fiber. So those are your cottons, linens, silks, and wools. You wouldn't use a soft wool. You'd have to use a wool that's a very hard wool so that it would leave your holes open. And think about what stabilizer you would use as well. Now, this is not a terribly dense fill. Um, so you could get away with um, probably using a, a tear and wash type of stabilizer, one that's a tear away, but then the fibers wash out after you launder it or some sort of washout type of stabilizer would work as well um, for this type of font. Okay, uh, let's bring us back here to a normal view. And then one other special effect is not in the effects category, but we will find it here in the foam category, it's, it has its own category. There are six types of fonts for foam. And if we choose this one, we'll just keep using the word fall. And again, you have a little symbol over here, um, PF for puffy foam tells you that. Now there are two colors listed here. The way the puffy foam, um, font stitch. First, you're going to get an outline of each letter. Uh, let me take you in to design player and just show you. Uh, come on, Let's scroll. All right, good. About where I want to be. So you can see there we have an outline first and then the machine will stop. It's, it's pre-planned for the machine to stop for you. And then you'll place your puffy foam on top of that. And then it will stitch the outline again and fill in your satin so that you have the, um, the nice effect. The puffy foam, again, you can change the size when you come into your color window or your color selection window. Here's your puffy foam. And you can go from two to six millimeters. So you can have it um, come up a little bit more from your fabric, or you can be just a very gentle um, type of effect on that. So puffy foam um, is what you see on a lot of hats. A lot of children's wear has, has some foam in it. So we can um, just see this upper one, no foam, just plain satin stitching. And then this lower one, you can see the the foam. If I kind of angle it, you can see that it's it's thicker on the edge. And there's my little piece of puffy foam that I pinned to my sample. So you would see I used um that's my puffy foam was only three millimeters, so it wasn't very was not very thick at all. So well, it does look like um, our time is about up. I do see a question, though. Let me pop over. Um, I apologize. I don't have those two embroidery feet near me um, to show you the difference on that. Um, but if you look in your owner's manual um, or if you need assistance with that, please uh, stop in and see your, your local retailer. They'll be able to help you with that as well. Sometimes... You know, one foot might be an optional purchase that might not come with the machine. So there could be options you're not aware of. And then one other question, um, is the twin needle alphabet on the box platinum? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And where to find the Greek letters? Sure. So if we come over here to letters, let's find those Greek letters. Amy, you might have to give me a little hint here. Let's see. Are they in? Mm -hmm. 
trying to think what category. 250 here, national category right here. We uh, I let go of my mouse again. So let's see. Celtic, Gaelic, Hebrew, Greek right here under national. So we have some different options there for our letters. Okay. All right, folks, so I think that we will just let me come back here and make sure no other questions. Um, I don't see any other questions, but I want to let you know that uh, next time on my Sonnet Facebook Live, um, Nikki Hudson will be your host. And that is going to be on Wednesday, November 8th at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And she is going to be doing quilting with says quilting with word sculpt. So she'll be doing a little font probably and some quilting. So I'm excited to watch that. So thanks for joining me today and enjoy your software. <laughs>